So the, the, the standard signals proposal is a proposal to add um, a reactive graph and the primitives involved with working with it to the TC39 ECMAScript language that we all know and love. Um, it is a, a collaboration between a number of different frameworks. Um, and it's really designed at a kind of interesting level in the tech stack, I would say, where some parts of it are fairly user facing. You can imagine using these APIs directly. Other parts of it are kind of designed for framework authors, um, designed to be integrated into an existing system. And the most obvious kind of um, sign of this is that the standardization, the standard signals proposal has no effects. Um, it has a lower level thing which you use to build effects for a particular framework, for a particular um, way of, of kind of reasoning about rendering. Um, so I think that something that might be useful is, let's say, counter. Uh, counter is a signal of zero. Like this is the Angular syntax for creating a signal that tracks uh, what I would call like a writable signal, right? Um, that tracks a number. Um, and I'll show you the exact same in standard signal syntax, uh, new signal dot state um, of zero. So these two are effectively equivalent. Um, this is Angular. This is the proposal for standardization. Now, the first thing you notice is it's a class um, for instantiating it, which is kind of weird, right? That's a bit more overhead. And this is kind of how the standard process works. Like, they're, you're not so concerned with offering the cleanest API. You're concerned with off offering something that is a balance of a bunch of other things. Um, so in Angular, you read this thing by calling it. In the standard proposal, you read this thing with a .get method. And one of the reasons for this is, you know, with Angular, we don't expect anyone else to be taking our signal library and wrapping it or extending it, hopefully. Um, we kind of don't like you extending Angular classes because they make it hard for us to do migrations and change your code. Um, but standard signals are designed to be extended. So you can extend signal.state. You can override the get method and do your own thing. You can override the set method here and like call super.set if you want to. Um, so it's designed to be an integration point where other frameworks can come and extend this thing, add their own behavior, adapt it to their own API shape if they want to. Um, so as a result, you kind of, the, the baseline thing gets a little bit more um, a little bit more verbose, but it unlocks this power of being able to, in a performant way, wrap these things without having to create extra closures and stuff. Um, so that is kind of the writable signal side of things. Uh, we also have computed. So those in Angular, right, like double count, if I can type as a computed of counter, we have the exact same mechanic in standard signals. So you can say const double count is new um, signal.computed. And you pass the same counter dot, or I <laughs> keep calling it counter dot get. Exact same mechanic, just two different APIs for expressing it um, with a very similar reason under the hood. Making this a class allows it to be extended, allows you to override the methods in a performant way in a way the JavaScript engine can optimize really well. Um, so really, that's you know signal and computed. Um, that's the the heart of a reactive graph. Um, you can read this thing anywhere you want to. You can uh, render it in templates. Everything should work just fine. Um, now I mentioned there is no effect, right? So in Angular, I can say console.log of counter. And we all know that when the counter changes, when someone does uh, counter.set to five, then this thing will produce a log message because the effect will run. 
But when does this effect run? Right? When is this actually executed? Um, and the answer is it depends. It depends very much on the person who implemented the effect and what they chose for when they think this graph is in a consistent state where it's the right time to read it. Um, in Angular, sometimes that is in a microtask. Um, the main effects work in microtasks. We also have integrations with components. So you can, when you queue an effect inside of a component, the timing changes slightly because you have to wait for the component's inputs to be initialized in order to read all the input signals that you might want to wrap inside of your effect. That's not something we can very easily express in a standard. There is no one timing of when effects run that works for every framework across the board. Especially when you think of like, this is the user model for effect. This is the user function for effects in Angular. But there's also the effects that we get from just saying like, I have a template that's going to read the counter. You think of it as an Angular component as a template, but it's actually a different kind of effect under the hood. And it runs with a very different timing. Um, in particular, it has to run kind of after its parent component does. Because the parent component might say, I'm going to actually destroy this child. We don't want to show the counter anymore. Um, so these things exist in a hierarchy that's determined by the framework's model of your application. Um, so the standard actually has no effect operation. Uh, instead, it has this thing that's a much lower level primitive called a watcher. Um, and so you create a watcher, signal.watcher, and you pass something called the notify function here. Um, let's do it this way. And notify is uh, a function that gets an instance of the watcher. So this will be the watcher that we did. Um, and you can say, like, for const s of um, this dot get pending. So signal s is dirty. And watchers don't do anything by default. You have to say watcher.add. Um, and we add the counter to this thing. Uh, it's not add, sorry, it's watch. We debate the names of these APIs so much, you forget which one's the current one. Um, watcher dot watch the counter, and that means that whenever the counter signal changes, the watcher will call its notify function and tell you that there's some set of signals that became dirty as a result of a write to the graph. Um, now, if you do something interesting in here and you say, okay, well, let me just like console.log the value of the signal or console.log the value of my counter even, let's say, um, these things throw. And they throw because we're not actually guaranteeing you that the graph is in a safe state to read these signals. Watcher is designed to tell a framework, hey, some things became dirty you need to go and schedule execution of effects at some point. It's not safe to read it now, but you need to arrange for this thing to run in the future at the time that makes sense to your framework. So Angular would create the effect function. We can actually try and write it here. Um, you have the effect, which is like the callback function that you want to run, let's say. Um, and so we would write like, Watcher is new watcher. Let's get a notify function here. And then watcher.watch uh, 